Hey guys, it's John. I'm playing the legendary Olegas on ICC. And looks like we got a QGD on our hands. I think I won against Olegas last time we played. But admittedly, it was a while ago. And um, I don't recall exactly what happened. Okay, so he's going to like liquidate the center? I guess he can do that. What happens if I go here? Okay, so he attacks my bishop. And I can take queen takes e4. Hmm. This just looks like a way to like equalize for him without a lot of risk. He's pretty good at this type of thing, as guys like uh, Chess Explained and Greg Shahadi have shown in detail. <laughs> He's a frequent opponent of those guys. Let's just go here. He can't take my pawn because of bishop takes h7. So the problem is he can get this pawn back fairly easily. Um, yeah, I just don't want to have like a worse position when I have to give the pawn back. What to do, what to do. My knight's misplaced. It's definitely misplaced. Yeah, this is how he wins a lot of games. So I should shut up and find the best move. <laughs> Alright, I honestly don't see like that great of a, an option for me. I think I played the opening too lackadaisically. So, yeah, we're just going to trade some stuff. I'm worse here. I'm a little bit worse. Tiny, tiny bit. I don't think it should matter if I play fine, but... I mean, he can, he can come to d2 whenever he wants. My next plan will be, like, if he plays rook d2, I think I'll go f3. And then stick a rook on d1, or maybe rook f2, I'm not sure. Okay, so he wants to transfer the bishop to c6. It's fine. Just do this. Okay. Now we're probably looking at swapping everything. <laughs> I'm playing playing right into Olegas' hands. Oh wait, I might not have beat, beat him last time. Last time I think we got this knight endgame where I should have won. But uh, I couldn't find the win at the end. So yeah, like maybe he could have won, but... Didn't quite have it. Uh, so if I take, he takes a3, say king f8, f3, king e7, king f2. Yeah, he's going to get a slightly better king position if I trade knights. So I don't want to do that. I just don't want to do that quite yet. Okay, I'm just going to bring my king up. He can take on c3, that's fine. I mean, I'm going to have slightly worse pawns, but... I have a clear shot to the center with my king. So I don't think I'm too bothered by this. Yeah, it's a clear shot to the center. Hmm. Now we start staking out some territory with our pawns. Maybe h4? Let's go h4. He might try fixing them. Hmm. Let's go bishop b3, huh? Uh, I'm just thinking how I want to do this. Yeah, let's play bishop b3. It's fine. Plays f6. Just go here. We'll see what he's up to. I mean, I, don't, I can't really win this. So it's not like that important to me if I. Okay, well, maybe he can take with the F pawn now, yeah. Unbalance the position slightly. Unbalances it very slightly. Now maybe I go here. Stick this guy on A3, where he's safe. 
Okay, now I don't think I can ever lose. Don't think that's possible. Never say never, though. You just never know in these positions. Against a tricky opponent. What's he going to do? Bishop e6? Okay. I mean, to win this, he'd have to take some really significant risks. Like, really significant. Because if he ever moves his king, I just immediately go um, king e5 or whatnot. So, I don't know that it's really possible to lose this. I want to go king e4 somewhere, though. Just do it now. Check. He'll check me on c2, yeah. Draw. See if he takes a draw. Probably not. <laughs> He's going to try to trick draw. me somehow. Oh, no, he offered a draw. Okay. Yeah, there's not really much to play for, especially from my end. I was just making moves back and forth. I, I gave away all my, any advantage I had in the opening. I mean, I can't even speak of an advantage yet because I didn't have one. <laughs> but uh, I think by the time he got d4 in, He's already at least equal. So this line of the QGD, I'm not too familiar with this early C5 approach. Maybe this is an Olega specialty, because I, I mean, I'm sure it's a line. I just don't see people playing it this way too often. Is there any way I could, like, take advantage of this? Not really. I mean, sometimes white can play queen C2 here to stop bishop F5, but, um... Hmm. I'll have to look this up. Actually, maybe in retrospect, knight, the knight should come to e2. That might be better. A lot of times when they play c5, the knight is better off on f3, but I think this might be a case where knight e2 is superior. Because then I don't get pinned with bishop g4. So, because as it was played in the game, yeah, I think d4 comes, and I don't have much. I played, I played the move that you'd think would be decent against d4, or if you're going to face d4, how you'd meet it. But let's see. Okay, so the engine says play knight e4, or knight takes d4, but it doesn't give much, much of anything. Just leads to a very open and dead position. Let's see that line, though. Knight takes d4, knight takes, e takes, queen takes. So now we've wiped out all of the center pawns. It's just the evaluation is determined by peace activity and peace play. It claims some advantage for white, but I mean, who really knows here? <laughs> I don't see much to go off of in this position. He doesn't have any problems developing. Yeah, so I think after knight a4 and bishop d6, take, take. Okay, bishop e2 was maybe a try. Uh, it's, even in the line it, it's giving with bishop e2. I still don't come out massively on top or anything. Some line like this. Admittedly, this does look a lot better than the game. I can threaten back rank mate, compel him to trade. Oh yeah, I totally would have taken this position over the game. <laughs> Even though this is also equal. Bishop d7. Yeah, because in the game he just um, was able to liquidate pretty easily. Yeah, I'm worse here. Pretty sure. Not much, but something. Maybe even bishop c4 wasn't so accurate. The engine says bishop c2 is better. Okay, so that guards the knight in advance. Then I don't have to do bishop c4 to b3. That makes sense. I think it said he might have even had a stronger option in knight e4. Postpone the capture on d4 for one move and just improve his knight. 
Although that runs into maybe some f4 stuff. Probably not though, because let's say here, queen e3, take, take, take. Yeah, if I move this bishop, he has knight d2, forking my rook and bishop. Gives him some play. Hmm. This is always a nasty feeling when it's like not even move 20 and you're white and you already have to think about equalizing. <laughs> it's an important skill though, knowing how to equalize a position here. Oh, I had rook fd1? I didn't notice that. I just thought my knight was under attack, I had to move it. But yeah, this works because um, if he takes here, I have this in between move. Removing the defender of his rook. Otherwise, if I had to take back this way, I'd be in a rook versus two minor piece situation. This would be really, really favorable for black. So, I move my knight back. I thought he should play knight d, uh, rook d2 here. Yeah, at least make me think about how to defend this pawn. He went bishop c6. We swapped everything. Check. I'm curious here if I made the right call. I just played f3, allowing him to take, but allowing my king to come up to d4. And the line I was um, a little bit afraid of, just to illustrate it, is if I trade, now my pawn on a2 is under attack. I should probably play a3. And then his king gets to the center a little bit faster, doesn't it? Like, let's say here, f3, here, 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 here. And I guess he has his choice of squares to go to. I guess the computer doesn't think it's anything that should upset the result of the game. But uh, I was willing to take on a pawn weakness just so my king could have the jump on his. Because I think with my king on d4, there's never any danger. If this pawn were on b2, white would be better. Well, not really. It'd still be a draw. But um, <laughs> the fact that I have this pawn weakness... Um, counteracts the effect of me having a, a better king than him. Yeah, I'm not sure I even made the best decision with my pawns over here. I didn't want to be too much in a hurry to try to like, establish them all on dark squares, because that might give him some inroads on the light squares. So as you can see, like I put one on a dark square, but I left this construction alone. And I just started moving my bishop. Because, I mean, it crossed my mind, like, maybe I should play g3 and then f4. But I don't want to give him extra opportunities with, like, infiltrating with his king. And maybe later I have to worry about a weak g4 square or something. Many ways to draw this, but I'm pretty happy with the way this one turned out. Although the fact that he got g5 and when I took, he was able to take the f-pawn, that was a little concerning. So actually that should make me think twice about this whole strategy, perhaps. Because if he had to take with the h-pawn here, no problem. That's just total symmetry on the, the king side. But when he takes this way, always he has this potential for an outside pass pawn. And I think once he establishes that pawn on h4, I have to watch out for tricks like bishop takes f3, g takes, and then pawn push. And like his pawn can go through sometimes. So... Once I got this maneuver in, though, I think I'm fine. I was a little surprised he didn't offer more exchanges on e6, like going into the king and pawn endgame. Let's just see if there's a, ever a place he could have done that. Like here, for instance. Did he play it? No, he didn't. Like, let's say he plays bishop e6. I thought that would force me to make an interesting decision. Because if I take, yeah, I think I'm losing this pawn end game here. And the problem is he has way more tempos than me. I, I'm trying to stop his king from getting into f5. But after this, look at that. I'm out of pawn moves. I'm out of pawn tempo moves. So his king will get in here, and then he gets in here, and probably gets in all the way here. <laughs> yeah, that's rough. So... I'm sure I would have avoided the trade. I don't think I would have played bishop h3 as the engine is suggesting, though. I think I would have gone bishop h5. Okay, and it does look like this is enough to hold, but I'm a little surprised he never went to e6. I don't think he ever did, did he? Check. 
He can't really offer a trade on d7, can he? Because if he ever does that, I just I swap and then play king e5. So let's just say, like, for illustrative purposes, if that ever happens, I get in here, boom, boom, now I'm winning. But the e6 trade was an, was an option. Check. And he's usually very quick to try to exploit any available resource. Or if he's not quick to exploit the resource, he'll he'll utilize the resource in a slow and excruciatingly painful manner. <laughs> you know, so that's kind of what I was expecting here with me having like twice as less time as him. And I think here we agreed it drawn. Okay. So on the surface, a pretty uh, tame game against Olegas. There was a lot of exchanges, and it was symmetrical for much of it. But there's some interesting stuff going on there. Um, I don't mind playing this guy. I actually kind of like playing this guy, because I know it's going to be a tough game every time I do. And um, his player type, you know, he plays fast. He plays good moves. He knows his openings really well. I feel like that's someone that, um, if I played against this guy all the time, my technique would be improved. Would... Uh, would um, what am I trying to say? I think I'd have greater technique and I'd be more confident in some of my decisions and technical positions just because he's forcing me to make such quick decisions over the board. So, but yeah, he, <laughs> obviously he's still going to uh, go for a lot of flags and such, but that's the name of the game. Got to go with it. All right. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this one and I will talk to you guys later. Thanks guys.